Okay, what we're going to do in this video is uh, we're going to show you how we make mold boxes for poured silicon molds. Now, what he's doing here is he's just getting a measurement of the piece because he's going to actually cut the bottom of it. And we want the bottom of it to be the right size um, in order to preserve or in order to preserve the um, amount of silicone that we're using in the mold now you can just make a box you can guess and all that stuff and make a huge box but then you're going to use uh, way more silicone than you need and nobody likes spending any more money than you have to so we like to have about a quarter to a half inch on each side of the piece of silicone in the mold uh, any more than that is kind of a waste for us and that's what we found out so we make a lot of boxes out of expanded PVC. Now this is quarter inch expanded PVC uh, plastic, and you can get that online. There's probably even gonna be a link in this video here. So all he's doing is he's transferring the size uh, that he measured off of the little boot sculpture onto the uh, expanded PVC. And then he's going to cut that. Um, in this case, he's actually gonna use a, a vibrating tool uh, to cut that but and you'll see that here in a minute but um, th this is the bottom so he's trying to get it right after that doing the sides it'll be a lot easier for him to uh, uh, to get the measurements on that but the bottom kind of dictates the size of the mold so uh, that's uh, he wants to take the time to uh, get it uh, as right as possible because uh, it'll affect the rest of the mold box. So he's just putting a, um, a half round blade in his uh, uh, vibrating saw and it cuts it very good very good and and um, it's actually pretty handy because it's real portable. Uh, you can get these things everywhere now. They only came out just a few years back but there's a lot of uses for them so uh, it's a handy tool to have in your shop. If you don't have one, you should probably go pick one up. But he's going to cut this and, and then he's going to put that boot on it. And then he's going to continue on cutting the rest of the, um, the pieces to make the entire box. Okay, now he is uh, positioning the uh, little boot sculpture on the bottom. He's going to use this just to line it up to make sure it's centered right. So he, he has um, the right amount of allowance between the mold box wall and the sculpture. So we don't overuse the silicone. And you can see he's really taking kind of his time really checking it. Uh, so he gets it right worst thing you could do is get it in the wrong position and then have one of the sides of the sculpture like touching the side of the mold box or something like that so now he's um he has already cut the other pieces he did those just like he did that first one so we didn't show you that but uh so he's already cut the other pieces and this expanded pvc it's you know it's just quarter inch plastic so it's light and durable uh, accepts hot glue very well and also the hot glue acts as a sealer so you notice he'll put down a bead of hot glue and then we use a an air stapler uh, to fasten it together permanently the only thing with an air stapler is uh, in this quarter inch stuff once in a while the staple will, will kick out to the side or something a little, a little bit but it really doesn't affect anything you know, we try not to have that happen but Sometimes it does, but you really don't need to worry about it because it doesn't really affect anything. So he's got the hot glue. He's just going to place that on there. And then you'll see he'll staple it together with a, with a little air stapler until he gets the entire box made. Um, and then he'll continue on uh, and place the sculpture inside the box.
Okay, so now what he's going to do here is uh, he's just simply putting hot glue on the bottom of the boot. And he's going to be really careful when he lowers it, lowers, lowers it down in there so he can make sure that it's not going to touch a side wall or anything like that. Now I want to remind you that everything you see him using here uh, will be in links down below. If you don't know where to get some of this stuff, just go down in the description of this video and, uh, and you can get it all right there or you can link to it all right there. We link to everything. If you see something that we don't have a link to, message us and we'll tell you where to get it. Uh, most of this stuff is readily available. So he has got it mounted into the mold box and now he's simply getting the uh, silicone ready to pour. Now this is Mold Max 30 from Smooth On. We use a lot of different silicones here. This one works pretty good for this application. So in this, um, guy here his name's drake he's used to using that so we let him use it and it's pretty durable when we do our pressure casting now he's making this mold for pressure casting so we will actually vacuum this rubber before we pour it in so now what he's doing is this is a, a 10 to 1 uh or 10 percent ratio uh, silicone so he put in the catalyst it's pink it's going to turn the whole thing pink it's 10 percent catalyst and that's by weight we measure everything by grams you can get your own gram scale by going to amazon or something like that and there there will be a link i'm sure to some kind of gram scale in the in the description below but uh we just use one gallon buckets white buckets and the nice thing about silicone is uh, the buckets will clean out and you can reuse them over and over again until they just get too scratched up and stuff. But uh, silicone, if you're not used to mixing it, it mixes difficult. Uh, the one side is very thick and uh, it mixes difficult. You just kind of got to stay with it and get it mixed. The downside of it being th so thick and uh, also the reason why we would vacuum is as you're mixing it, you're going to um, incorporate a lot of air into it you know you can spend a lot of time trying to not but it's kind of futile so uh, we highly suggest if you're doing any kind of a poured silicon mold in these smaller quantities like that to uh, vacuum your rubber especially when you're doing pressure casting uh, now here's what he's doing. He's putting it in the vacuum chamber. We're gonna show you a couple different looks of that. If you've never seen uh, rubber boil before under vacuum, it's kind of neat. It kind of looks kind of kind of spooky or scary. It's kind of nasty looking, but um, you'll see it here as the pressure um, or the, the air gets taken off. This is a vacuum chamber. So we're gonna take all the air off and take the atmosphere out of it see in the one inset video that he's shaking it when you take the air off of silicone it expands expands considerably so a rule is you want to only have about your container or your bucket that contains it about one third full you can get by having it fuller than that you can see right there it's collapsing uh, but you can get by having it fuller than that if you shake it because it'll make it collapse a lot faster and then it'll draw more air out. Now it collapsed once and um, we typically, what we do is, um, is vacuum it three times. So we like to get it to boil and vacuum and, and collapse three times. Now it rarely does that. Uh, it rarely boils and vacuums completely three times. And it just amount depends on how much air that's in there. So, this is after uh, the second time here that he did, and uh, you could see that most of the air was gone. So now he's moving over to um, pour it, and we're giving you a couple of different views here. What you want to do, and what it'll help get the rest of the air out that didn't come out during the vacuum, is if you hold it up high and and uh, pour it into a narrow thread or a narrow ribbon of material it'll tend to pop a lot of that air out of there as it's going down through that ribbon. But you want to pick uh, one place in the mold. You notice he started in the in the one corner and you actually want to fill it up 
from that one point. What that does is allows it to fill up and slowly just uh, run over the surface of the piece. And as it's running over the surface of the piece, it's just pushing the air. And so you're not trapping any air uh, against, the, against the sculpture. So this is gonna take a little while because I think we actually show you the whole thing or most of the whole thing. And he's just gonna keep pushing it, but you notice, uh, or you're gonna keep pouring it and it's pushing that air out as it just flows across the surface of the piece. Now, <clears throat> he's going a little slower now because it's working its way around the bottom and that's where you can kind of get a lot of air trapped as it's working around a piece. So he's gonna go slower and then you'll see he'll speed up a little bit more here as it starts coming up on the piece. But always pouring in that one side, uh, in that one corner, uh, so it can run from that corner and then flow around the part itself. I want to remind you again that if you see any of the materials you see in this video, there will be links below in the description. If you can't find them, if you can't find them locally, you might as well get them shipped to you. A lot of times you might even go to a store and they'll say, oh, I can order that for you. Well, you know, uh, I get tired of hearing that myself, but evidently they don't realize that there is an Amazon or other companies out there online. You can order it yourself. But as you can see, he's kind of pouring a little bit faster now. And you can do that as it as it starts creeping up. But you really want to be careful when it's running around the piece. Uh, as well as running up on the piece so you don't trap air against that uh, against the uh, the uh, actual sculpture in the mold now i want to touch base again like i said before this this is being made so we can pressure cast these and if you do not vacuum your rubber and when you pour these molds for pressure casting what will happen is you will trap air or there'll be air in your rubber and then that'll get sit against the piece if you pour it like this it won't trap the air against the piece but there'll be air trapped in the rubber that might set just a little bit off the piece there might be a real thin section of rubber in there what happens when you pressure cast it, it expands that and um uh it, or it it doesn't expand it sorry it squeezes that air out and then you'll end up with all these little dimples all over your, your all, all over your casting from a mold that wasn't vacuumed. So he just noticed here that the thing was a little bit out of level. So he placed this uh, stick under it to level it up so it'll flow in there right and won't overflow on one side and and have a messed up mold. Now this mold will be poured from the bottom. So uh, this top, he wants it as level as possible because that's how it'll actually set in the um, uh, in the pressure pot. Now, once he's done pouring that, um, you know, there's not a lot to it. Um, you let it set overnight. Now, that particular rubber, that Mold Max 30, uh, we always let it set overnight. I think the cure time is like 16 hours. I'm not sure. Uh, we always let it set overnight to completely cure. But uh, so the next day we go and take it out. Now you're going to notice that what he's demolding here is actually a different piece than what we showed. It is not the little boot. Um, that work actually got done before we had a chance to film it. So we had this other little mold of our little mascot Ike that he's demolding. It doesn't matter what the sculpture is. He's demolding this the same way as he would have the little boot. And with this uh, expanded PVC, it's pretty simple because you can just drive your um, drive a chisel or something like that down the edge of it, and it'll it'll um, break that hot glue that sealed it, and also those those staples that he was using to hold it together will release pretty good. Uh, so you just got to take it off, and since it's a silicone, it, the mold box wasn't released. Uh, it releases from this expanded PVC pretty, pretty readily. So um, you really don't have to worry about release agents when you're using um, a, a decent silicone against this expanded PVC. So you can see it comes off fairly easily. 
Now, most of the molds that we make, we do for pressure casting. And, uh, and you've heard me say this before, we, we try to make a living doing this. So time is really a big factor in whether or not you're gonna make any money or not. So you'll see that there's some things that we kind of let go that really don't matter um, and don't really affect the end result. So you notice we just poured this block of mold. Now he's got to get that thing out of there. And a lot of people will register the sides of the mold or put a shim in there or they'll clay it up and pour half and then, and then uh, remove that clay and pour the other half with alignment bubbles or, or something like that. We've found but you know what, we can do that all day long and we can take a week to make a little mold and we don't get any better castings. Uh, we've learned over the years that if we go ahead and pour it in a full block and then we'll take an X-Acto knife and actually cut it out of there, we don't even have to worry too much about uh, making registrations when we're cutting out of there. You'll see other people that, that um, use the same type of mold making procedure and they'll like do little squiggly cuts down the side or something like that. And you can do that. There's nothing keeping you from doing it. But what we noticed is, um, you know, it doesn't line the mold up any better. And uh, if you make them squiggly cuts, then it's harder to figure out where to cut the, cut the sculpture out of the mold. So we just uh, started cutting it as straight as possible. And as you're cutting it, you know, you have to move the knife anyway, and in silicone, it actually cuts very easily. So it kind of creates its own registration uh, uh, in on the part lines as you're cutting it out. And you'll kind of see that later. They're not big, they're not evident, but it's enough to line the two sides of the mold up and get a perfect alignment when you're going to cast. And like I said, we use that and we've been using that for years, years ago we used to uh, clay them all up and register them and and all that stuff but you know when we finally realized that we weren't getting any better castings and then if we did it this way we decided that time is a lot more important and that actually translates right to our bottom line so uh that's this is how we do it now and we make thousands of of, of pieces uh a year and hundreds and hundreds of molds. So uh, once in a while, something will dictate something different, but for the most part, this is how all our pressure casting molds are made. So he's starting to cut down and you wanna find the, um, you know, the point, really a halfway point. It depends on what the sculpture is. You'll have to kind of look at each sculpture and figure out where your part lines need to be. And um, that is, Part of what you have to do um, if you're doing it yourself you need to be able to figure out where their those part lines need to be it's not real difficult once you look at it and you catch on a trick to it is you can set the sculpture up prior and you can uh, look at it and where you quit being able to see the sculpture will be a part line so it's fairly simple you can look at it from different angles and where where um, you know, that two-dimensional view that you're looking at ends is where your part line is going to be. So he's just cutting it out. And of course, this part line is right up the sides um, of his legs, right up over his head. Now, in this sculpture, this, like I said before, this is not the boot sculpture that we showed you in pouring. This is a different sculpture. And it's actually good because this one has a few little appendages on it that the other the other one didn't have so you get to see that so you see the back come right out of there not a problem but this sculpture has arms and hands now we can completely separate those those pieces off of there but then we have to try to hold them in there and so if we did that we would have to have a complete mold box we don't like complete mold boxes we want to put a flat piece on each side of this and wrap it with um, with zip ties and that's the quickest way to turn these things around so what he's doing here is he's just making a slice and he's being really careful we found out if you be really careful at this point you can um, 
you can save a lot of time later. So all he's doing is he's slicing that that mold. And you don't have to worry about it if it like goes off a little bit here or there. As long as you don't cut clear through the mold. Um, then uh, you just cut enough to be able to get that arm and that hand to pop out of there. And uh, once that's out of there, he'll look at that and he'll say, okay, when I look in here, it looks like it'll catch here or here. So he'll just reach in there and he'll slice those little areas. And believe it or not, when that mold is clamped together with this silicone, uh, this, like I said before, there's a Mold Max 30 and it's a 30 pound or a 30 durometer silicone. Um, it goes together really well. So we, in most cases, if it's clamped together right, when it goes into the casting, you won't even have flashing there where he's cut that. It'll go together perfectly and it'll cast the little guy just almost perfectly. So all he's doing here is he's just trimming it up. So um, there's less stuff in the way when, when we go to um, put the side pieces on it. So there you go. Uh, we poured, his, poured a mold and now he has demolded it.